<coughs> Hello, I'm Betty, a math educator from South Carolina. I'm here with Judy, a math educator from Colorado. We're going to explore an activity called exponential functions, f of x equals a times b to the x power. This is an activity from the math inspired activities at education.ti.com. It's a TI inspired document available. You see that on the left side of your screen. And there's also a student activity page and teacher notes available at Math Inspired. We're going to look at page 1.2 for this of this document. And you'll notice that there's a graph of an exponential function. The function is 1 multiplied by 2 to the x power. In this particular part of our activity, we're going to explore functions that have a base of 2. In this case, we're looking at the graph of f of x equals 1 times 2 to the x, or f of x equals 2 to the x. We'd like you to consider what happens to the graph as the value of a increases. Judy's going to click on the slider and increase the value of a. Please observe the graph. She'll move the value of a back to 1. And then as she is increasing it again, again, think about the question, what happens to the graph as the value of A increases? Does the domain change? Does the range change? What do you observe? Please pause the video, write down your responses, and then return to the video. Hopefully you noticed as Judy changed the values of A from 1 on up to 5, that the graph got steeper as you look at it from left to right. And the y-intercept also changed. You might look at the y-intercept carefully as she changes the a value from 5 to 4 to 3 to 2 to 1. It appears that the y value of the y-intercept is the a value. We'll investigate that further in a few minutes. The domain of the function is still all real numbers. The range is y is greater than 0, still that y greater than 0 range. And as x increases, y continues to increase as it did in the original graph. Let's now consider other possible values of a. On the next slide, you're going to see that we will now look at what happens if the value of a is a negative number, but we will continue to keep the base with a value of 2 for the base. So Judy's going to change the values of a so that they are negative. Notice as she decreases these values, we want you to think about what happens to the graph and does the domain change in comparison to our original graph. And Judy, if you'll kindly go back to a equal 1, let's remind you this was the original graph that we looked at, 1 times 2 to the x power. So as she moves a to negative values, think about what happens to the graph. Does the domain and range, do they differ from what we saw originally? Please pause the video, write down your responses, and then return to the video. Hopefully you notice that this time, as x increases, the function values are decreasing. And also the fact that the y-intercept has changed, but again, it appears that the y-intercept y-value is the same as the a-value. The domain is all real numbers, but now our range is y is less than 0. Judy, I'd like to ask you to change the value of a back to positive 3, if you will. Let's everyone consider this graph where we have y is equal to 3 times 2 to the x. Let's concentrate on what happens if that a value changes to negative 3. So now we're changing the a value to negative 3. And as you may have written down before you came back to the video, this is a reflection of the graph f of x equals 3 times 2 to the x about the x-axis. So when we changed a from a positive to a negative, 
we saw that reflection across the axis. Let's now consider these two questions. For this function, where the base is still 2, what happens in whenever we have an x value of 0? What is the value of f of 0? And describe the graph of a function when a is equal to 0. And why do you think that happens? So please take a few moments, pause the video, and come back and describe the function value at f of 0. And also, when a is equal to 0, what happens to the graph of this function? As we've been looking at these graphs, hopefully you noted each time that when x is equal to 0, we saw a function value that was the same as the a value. Judy's going to write this for you in function notation. We have f of 0 using function notation equals a multiplied by 2 to the 0 power. Since 2 to the 0 power is 1, that tells us that f of 0 is equal to a. Again, 2 to the 0 power is 1. 1 times a is a, so f of 0 is equal to a. So as you saw in each of these examples, at x equals to 0, the function value is a, and that gave us those y-intercepts you looked at. Now, if a is equal to 0, hopefully you can quickly see that the right-hand side of this equation would be 0 multiplied by 2 to the x, so the function value would simply become f of x equals 0. And Judy can show this on the graph. When a is equal to 0, we have a constant function. It could also be written f of x equals 0 or y equals 0. So this is not an exponential function. It's a constant function. The graph is a line. Now let's go back to the general form of our function. And on the next page, we have f of x equals a multiplied by b to the x power. And notice that a cannot be 0. That's listed clearly. Our basis positive with exception listed. b cannot be equal to 1. You've looked at this in other videos, perhaps, so let's just summarize. We already know why a is not included. We looked at that on the preceding page. That would give us a constant function, f of x is equal to 0. And, of course, if the base is 1, we would have a multiplied by 1 to the x power. So Judy's going to write this for us, f of x equals a multiplied by base 1 to the x power. And 1 to any power is 1, so this leaves the function f of x equals a, which is a constant function, and that would simply be a horizontal line at y equal to a, or f of x equals to a. So this is not an exponential function. Now we're going to move to page 2.1 and consider another exploration. In this part of our activity, the base is going to remain one half. And as you see to the left hand side, right now the current value of a is one. So we have the function f of x is equal one multiplied by one half to the x power. We're going to consider what happens to this function as the values of a increase. Think about the changes in the graph, and also consider whether the domain and range values change from the graph you originally saw at f of x equals this one-half to the x power. So Judy's going to increase the values of a. She's going to move back to a is equal to 1. So compared to this graph where a is equal to 1, if she increases the value of a, think about what happens to the graph and whether the domain and ranges change, whether there is a change in the domain and range. Please pause the video, write down your responses, and then return to the video. 
hopefully you noticed, as we did in the earlier part of the exploration, that as the value of A changed, the y-intercept changed, and it appears that the y-value of the y-intercept is the same as the A-value. You may think that the steepness of the graph changed in some way. The domain is all real numbers. That did not change. The range is y is greater than zero. That did not change. But in this function, as the values of x increase, the function values do decrease. Now, let's consider other possible values of a. We want to consider this time what happens if the value of a is a negative number. So Judy's going to remind you what f of x equals to 1 looks like, 1 multiplied by 1 half to the x power. So with an a value of 1, we have this function. Now we're going to think about what happens if a is negative. So Judy will decrease those values so that we have negative values of a. She's changing these values. Remember, a now is staying negative. Think about these questions. What happens to the graph? Does the domain and range change? Please pause the video, write down your responses, and then return to the video. Hopefully you noted that the y-intercept did change, and as we conjectured before, it appears that the y-value of the y-intercept is the a-value, and then we looked at that in the general form earlier and determined that f of 0 was the a-value. The domain of this function is the same as that when we had a equals to positive 1. The domain is all real numbers, but the range now is y is less than 0. Let's ask Judy to change the value of a so it's positive 2 and remind ourselves what that graph looked like when a was positive 2. And now let's change a to negative 2. And notice that we do have a reflection across the x-axis as we discussed earlier. Now let's move to page 3.1 in the TI Inspire activity. On this page, we have the graph of, the, of a function where we can change both the a and b values. Currently, the a value is equal to 2. The b value, the base, is 2.5. Judy is going to leave the a value at 2 and change some values of b. Please watch the graph as she does this. So a will remain 2. Base is changing. Now she can change the base to perhaps the number 3, just to leave it at a certain value. And now we're going to change the A value so that it is different. She can increase the A value or decrease the A value. And if we make A negative, let's see if we can do that on this particular graph. And so we have lots of options here. Notice that the B values range can change from 100th to 5, and the A values are negative or positive. Again, A cannot be equal to 0. So keeping these changes in mind, let's look at a problem on the next page. An exponential function is shown. This is a snippet taken from a graph done on a graphing calculator. We would like for you to write a possible equation for the function in the form f of x equals a times b to the x.
please pause the video and write an exponential function, a, a possible exponential function, for the graph that's shown below. When you've had a chance to write your function, please return to the video. Hopefully you noted that since the y-intercept of this function is at 0, 2, our a value must be equal to 2. Judy is going to start out writing the function f of x equals 2, our a value. And then we will put open and close parentheses just simply because we want to think about the base for just a moment. As x is increasing, the function values are increasing. So from the examples you've seen before, hopefully you chose a value of the base greater than 1. Perhaps you chose a value of the base at 3. And if b is equal to 3, would this make sense? Well, if the x values increase, the function values would certainly increase. If you had another ordered pair for a point on this function, you should be able then to determine the exact value of b. But in equal and an equation of this form will be satisfactory for this graph. Let's give a challenge for you. Here's another graph, and it's an exponential function, graph below. Again, a snippet from a graph on a graphing calculator. We'd like you to write a possible equation for this function in the form f of x equals b to the x. Consider again what the a value should equal and what the possible b value would be in this particular case. For other videos, please go to the TI Education YouTube channel.